Well, before we um, get right on with our guest speaker, Eric Wheeling, um, we need to know if there are any successes. Has anyone gotten rid of any stuff in the last month? Oh, don't all rush to it. No one's gotten rid of anything. Well, I have a pile of electronic equipment ready to go. So it's going this week. Now that the, the um, recycle is open, I'm ready. So I'm going to punch holes in my old hard drives and go for it. I'm tired of electronic stuff around here. Good for you. Well, especially when you're not using it anymore. Yep. All those cables that that can no longer be used for anything back from the well, our first computer was 1980. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's time to go. Um, there will be no meeting for our group in December. So the idea is that you should give away lots of holiday presents. <laughs> so if you have ornaments to give to family, this is a good time to do it, or packages of stuff, family photos. What a nice gift. So think about that and um, plan how you're going to unload stuff after the new year, because you're all going to make a new year's resolution of getting rid of stuff. Um, does anyone have any ideas for future meetings? What do you want to know about getting rid of? I think today is going to solve a lot of things for me, so I'm, I'm ready. Anyone else? No? Well, part of it is getting it all packed up and out of the house. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And I've decided that every time I live 10 miles out of town, every time I go to town, I'm supposed to take a bag of stuff to value village or wherever. So I'm, I'm trying. Well, I've given some furniture to the love in the name of Christ group, which have changed their name. And I, uh -huh. but they they came out and took things about Three weeks ago, I mean, they took a bed, they took some a, a desk, they took some bookcases, and they the people managed to get it all in the back of that truck. Wow. I was impressed that they got it in the back of the truck. So you did well. Well, I did, and I don't, I mean, they even gave me this little donation slip where <laughs> I can then put down for tax purposes, what I thought the things were worth. Mm -hmm. I mean, the man and woman didn't say, well, your double bed is worth so much or anything like that. No, I don't think they can say that. They probably can't. And I mean, when you're lit, when you got older the way we all have, and you're living with stuff that's older than you are because it belonged <laughs> to your parents. <laughs> Okay, Leslie, would you like to introduce our speaker? Okay, um, so our speaker today is Eric Mewling. Um, Eric has been selling on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist for many years. Uh, he says it's not just about downsizing, but he's very motivated to see that his things are reused, recycled, and ultimately kept out of the landfill. So today he'll talk about how to list items for sale on these platforms. Um, how to set or negotiate a price, and how to be safe during the entire interaction. So help me in welcoming Eric. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> uh, thank you, Leslie. And, and I appreciate the invitation to come to this group. I didn't know that you had a downsizing Zoom group. And it's uh, uh, Marianne Bokert actually uh, must be a member of this group because she invited me to this, uh, to this talk. Uh, I do a lot of selling and I'm going to, I have put together a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, much of what I'm going to talk about is Facebook marketplace, but I think it's going to be applicable to selling anywhere else online, including Craigslist, uh, 
uh, LinkedIn, uh, Eventbrite. There are just a lot of uh, venues out there to sell stuff. And uh, with that, uh, here we go. I'm going to share my screen and, and a PowerPoint. All right, and do you all see a screen that says AAH downsizing? Yes. Okay, and yep. nothing more? None of the other personal stuff you on my computer. Do you, so, do you only see the, the, uh, the PowerPoint? Yes, no, it's the PowerPoint. Yeah. Okay. That's it. That's yeah, and your name and today's date. That sounds great. Okay, here we go. I don't know if you've seen this before, but it's <laughs> something I, well, I got it off the internet. So there you go. Uh, I've got a lot of experience selling on Facebook Marketplace. And I took a couple of screenshots of the things that I sold on Facebook in the past 12 months. And uh, it's a lot of stuff. And I guess I want to show you that to uh, to develop what's called my street cred. I want you to know that I have credibility that I've been doing this. And here's the proof. These are all things that I sold on Facebook Marketplace. But I do also sell on Craigslist. And here's a list of the things that I've sold recently on Craigslist. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So downsizing. Why I downsize? In this case, I sold some real estate and the Connex trailer was on the property and I wanted to sell the Connex and the property separately. So uh, at the time I had a number of rental cabins and the Connex was a place where if a tenant moved out and they left some furniture behind, I put it in the Connex. The Connex was swap space. Uh, tenants could, new tenants could look in the Connex and take what they wanted and, and tenants who were leaving could leave whatever they wanted. Uh, it seemed like a really good way of uh, reusing furniture. But I, I've downsized myself out of the real estate, uh, out of the cabin rental business. At one point, I had 18 rentals, and now I'm down to two. And I got to tell you, it feels great. Uh, so uh, that was the uh, so that was the uh, Connex that I downsized. Uh, I downsized because of regrettable purchases. I should have really test driven this a little bit more before I bought it. Its top speed was two miles an hour. I was hoping that would get me out to a remote cabin. It didn't work out. And I lost money when I sold it. Uh, live and learn, a regrettable purchase. Uh, why I downsized? My interests change. This was a do-it-yourself project. I built a windmill, a wind generator, and, and it worked. But in Fairbanks, we don't get much wind. And so it's been in storage for about 10 years, and now I'm trying to sell it, getting some interest, but I haven't sold it yet. Uh, why downsize? Big stuff. This was a catapult project. I mean, just dumb fun years ago. I welded up a catapult. And of course, I lost interest in it, and it sat on a lot for a long time collecting rust. I advertised it this summer, and almost instantly, a gold miner from up north uh, came by and bought it. He said his crew needs something to do on their downtime, and so now this catapult <laughs> sits on somebody's gold mine north of Fairbanks. I'm glad it's being reused. Uh, we live in a small town. Sometimes people show up to buy what I've advertised and I know them. This was kind of a fun connection because we are a small town. And sometimes when I sell something, I am just so pleased that somebody is finding a really cool reuse uh, for, the, for what it is. When I tore down the windmill, I had a lot of extra steel cable. The guy that bought the steel cable He's got a fish wheel on the Yukon River and needed a way to anchor the fish wheel to the shore. He bought the steel cable for a hundred bucks. He was thrilled. Uh, on the right side is an old uh, railroad jack that uh, I sold for a friend who doesn't use the internet. And, uh, and that jack is now in the uh, railroad museum in the Nana. I mean, sometimes it's just kind of fun the way things work out. 
occasionally there's I have a piles of stuff that are just too small to frankly to sell. It just doesn't make sense to advertise an old DVD player, player or picture frame. So occasionally I package some old le electronic stuff into a cardboard box, list it, and put it on Craigslist. And you know, for thirty bucks takes all. It sells and it keeps it out of the landfill, which is really one of my important goals. Think about electronics; they age so quickly. Uh, it, I feel lucky sometimes to be able to sell anything that's electronics because it it's just gets old. It's old faster than we do, and and then why I downsize sometimes it's just to get something off of my property. In this case, sadly. I did not keep up with knocking the snow off of this garage tent all winter long. And the snow took it down, bent all the metal frames. And at that point, it absolutely became pretty much worthless, except that it had a lot of good tarp as part of it and a lot of good nuts and bolts. Sold it for 20 bucks to somebody who took it off my property. And as far as I'm concerned, it was worth it to get it off my property and I got 20 bucks out of it, a few lattes. Uh, okay, so let's get to the nuts and bolts of selling. You're gonna be meeting people. And I just wanna throw out there that uh, COVID-19 safety is important. Uh, CDC guidelines, follow those. Uh, I mask whenever I meet somebody uh, and sell something. And I, frankly, I don't shake hands, uh, which is, boy, that's something that, that's kind of ingrained into us when we're meeting people and, and maybe sealing a deal. Uh, but I, I elbow bump and I fist bump. And that's what I do because I, I wear a mask everywhere that I go anyway. So that's one of the issues I think today when you're selling, keep, keep it in mind. And also you'll be wanting, I'm gonna recommend of course that you protect your privacy. Don't share your personal financial information. Uh, never provide verification codes. And if you're selling electronics, make sure that you've cleared any personal information from the device. And as I heard Betsy mention, she's going to punch holes in the hard drives before she recycles them. That's a great idea. I use the sledgehammer method. It works. Uh, when using Facebook Marketplace, oh, let me ask, let me mention about uh, questions. If you have questions, uh, take some notes right now, and I'd be glad to save five or 10 minutes at the end of this talk for questions and answers. So let's, let's just save all your questions for the end, please. Uh, avoid uh, communicating with buyers and sellers privately outside of Facebook and Messenger if that's where you met for the first time. Uh, avoid using email directly with the, a buyer or the seller. Uh, avoid gift cards. It's a current scam that's going around. And uh, move quickly to, uh, to complete a sale. I've highlighted those main things. But if you go to Facebook Marketplace, these are some helpful hints that you can click and find yourself on Facebook. Uh, for example, last just last week, I got a scam attempt. Again, I'm advertising these, uh, this windmill for sale. And somebody types in uh, somebody who's, who seems to be named Michael or Michael, uh, Michael or Michelle, I'm not sure, uh, says, is it still available? And I said, yes, it's available. I'm in Fairbanks and I'm off Farmers Loop Road. I, in general, give some people an idea where I am because a buyer might be out in North Pole. I've had people drive in from Toke to look at stuff. I mean, they were dr driving in from Delta Junction anyway to do their shopping. You know, I arrange my time around their time if they're coming into town, but I don't tell them where I live just yet, not until we've established a little bit of communication. So I say, well, I live off Farmer's Loop. What questions do you have? Are you interested in seeing it? Now I get, all right, I'm paying via Venmo or Zelle. My uncle will have to pick it up because I, it won't, because I won't be available. He lives near, but I won't be paying for but I will be paying for it. Well, to be frank, that just sounds like bullshit to me. You know, my, uh, my radar goes up immediately. Uh, that response doesn't make any sense. In fact, 
a real a real common scam is for somebody to say, uh, I'm paying, but my but I can't be there. My friend is going to pick it up. Uh, the payment never arrives, or the payment is uh, reversed in some way. Uh, I uh, I ended this conversation really quickly after that, uh, and it was the right way to handle it. Uh, I did not drag the conversation out. I was always tempted to to tease them just a little bit, taunt them, and and I thought, no, just end it, just end it. So try, uh, tips to avoid uh, scams. Avoid uh, giving refunds without first verifying the payment. Somebody may say, look, I've got this check. Uh, who knows? Maybe it's uh, some kind of... Uh, some kind of check and it's for more than what the uh what the item is what you're selling it for uh they want you to give you they want the item and they want a little bit of cash back for the check um use your common sense uh and be cautious when shoppers offer to op overpay for an item uh there are some other tips there again this is just a screenshot from the facebook marketplace site where uh, it says help so go ahead and be sure you uh, get familiar with Sam's. And if it doesn't smell right, uh, back away. Uh, what about cash? Well, I'm really comfortable accepting uh, cash and, and, and carrying a fair amount of cash around with me. Uh, how much cash are you care, uh, comfortable carrying, ar carrying around with you? Um, so when I sold that Connex, I sold it for $4,500 cash. The buyer on the right, uh, he paid me a down payment of $1,000 cash on site. And to confirm the transaction for both of us, uh, I gave him a bill of sale and took a picture of him with the, with the bill of sale. And we agreed that he would uh, pay the remaining $3,500 uh, at a later date, which he did uh, because we met in a public place. It was, um, oh, the Fred Meyer coffee shop. Fredmeyer West Coffee Shop, where he brought another $3,500 with him. The only time I got a little uncomfortable was sitting in a coffee shop and having, sitting at a table and having this guy count out $3,500 to me. Uh, my bank was in the same parking lot, Mount McKinley Bank. I went straight there and put the cash in the bank. Um, I, I would not, that's, that's more than my uh, walking around money limit. Um, so that's anyway, that was one way of handling a uh, transaction that was for anything more than 20 bucks, I don't know, 100 bucks, what's whatever you're, how are you comfortable? Why don't you uh, talk about that later at the end? So sell or keep, is, it the, uh, is the item sentimental? Uh, does it make you happy? Uh, would a loved one want it? Does it fit into your home? Is, does it still work? Have you used it in the past 12 months? Can you let it go? That's the last question I often find myself asking because I still have a hard time letting some things go. I still think, oh, someday I'm going to meet or or is getting rid of it going to in some way um, Okay, so my wife my, my, my wife gave um, excuse me, my sister gave me a watch years ago. I don't wear watches anymore. I've got the time on a cell phone. And, uh, and the watch means something to me because it was a gift from my sister, but I don't use it. And so I'm asking myself all the time, can I let it go? What does it mean? Um, doesn't take much space. I think about these things. Um, am I disrespecting her in any way? By just getting rid of it, it's clutter. And that goes for other things that I've been, uh, that people have gifted to me or things that uh, I attach to other people. I mean, in my, in my any way at all, reducing uh, the memory somehow of the person that that object is connected with, and uh, and I, I deal with that in some ways. Anyway, keep or sell. I'm sure you've discussed that a lot in, in this group. Uh, preparing to sell, clean the object, determine its condition, and and then check for. Uh, Check the price of similar items on Facebook Marketplace. You know, you're not going to get 90% of your, of your new price on anything. I often think the price of stuff that I sell is, frankly, it's yard sale prices. 
Uh, it's five cents on a dollar, 10 cents on a dollar. And, uh, and so, I mean, really, what is my goal? My goal is to get rid of stuff but uh, but if I make enough money to buy buy a latte or two at you know at a coffee drive through that's nice. But I don't I don't sell on Facebook Marketplace and uh, and try to pay the rent. That's uh, I'm I want to get it into other hands. I want to get it in the people in the hands of people that will use it. Um, that's really my goal. I don't have I have a few heirlooms. I'm not selling those, not yet. Okay, so let's get to Facebook Marketplace. These are gonna be screenshots with a step-by-step -step process of how you sell using Facebook Marketplace. Step one, click on the little Nikon, uh, the icon of a little shop, the top of your Facebook screen. That's easy. Step two, uh, select create new listing. You see that uh, the arrow at the bottom of the screen points at the create new listing button. Okay, we're on our way. Then uh, what's your listing type? Is it an item for sale, a vehicle, or a home or a rental? Those are some options. In this case, I'm just going to select item for sale. Uh, complete this form. Now Facebook has got a really, really easy form to fill out. What's the title of the item that you're selling? What's your price? Uh, what category does it fall in? What condition is it in? New, like new, good, fair. Uh, just, you know, fill out the form. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, under the category, there are more options that I have showing on the screen. You know, I mean, is it antique or collectible, arts and crafts, uh, auto parts and accessories? These are alphabetically presented. Uh, there are a couple of dozen different categories, but you uh, you have to use Facebook's categories. You can't get around that. You can't invent a category. Just use the category. Use one of the categories. That's as close as you can get to the item that you're selling. And uh, then there's a drop-down menu again for uh, it's the item's condition. And then Facebook also lets you say, is it a single item or is it a, a single item of many that are in stock? You know, maybe you're selling something that you've got a lot of, maybe you're really in business uh, with a bunch of similar items. And so uh, I'm always selecting single item. And then product tag is where you get to be creative. Um, these are just hashtags. In the product tag field, you can list up to 12 different, 20 different tags that help describe your product, that, uh, the tags that didn't exist in the categories. Then, now you know, Facebook ads, uh, Facebook Marketplace is free, and uh, but you can boost your listings after you publish. And boosting a listing means uh, paying Facebook money to uh, to reach more people because when you typically post something on Facebook Marketplace, first place it goes is into your own newsfeed, and all your friends will see that you're selling something. That's nice and it's free. And let's uh, go on to the next screen. Uh, oh, these are things that I've boosted in the past, and the reasons why I boosted these things are. Well, they were rental. You know, I wanted the rental to be seen by more than just my friends and also buy, sell, swap and trade uh, groups on Facebook. Uh, so I boosted uh, boosted a rental or boosted my uh, wind generator. I wanted it to be seen by people in Anchorage. I boosted that uh, track vehicle that I never should have bought. Um, I'm only boosting higher priced items. I mean, why boost something for 20 bucks? doesn't make sense. So you can boost uh, you can boost an item. Facebook gives you the option to boost. Uh, here's a completed ad that I made yesterday just for fun. Uh, it was that couch. I did list it at $50. How did I pick $50? I wanted to get rid of it. And I didn't want to just give it away. And I'm quite sure that a usable couch is worth $50 in Fairbanks. 
uh, I had 12 people respond almost immediately and uh, I picked one and uh, sold it. So back to Facebook uh, Marketplace. When you, before you hit the final submit button, you get to choose uh, some other places where you want your item to be shown. Now, for example, there is a group in Fairbanks called For Sale Fairbanks, North Star Borough. There's a group in Fairbanks called Buy and Sell or Trade Fairbanks, Alaska. These are groups that other people have created on Facebook. Uh, these are groups that I've joined. And I can't list my items on those groups unless I join those groups. And because they are private groups, you have to request to join those groups. I mean, I'm in the Farmer's Loop area. There's a Farmer's Loop Facebook page. Um, and I requested to join that Farmer's Loop Facebook page because uh, there's a lot of activity, mostly about lost lost pets in the area. Uh, some about look out for this or snow plowing or slippery roads, whatever. Uh, so, you know, so I joined the Farmer's Loop Facebook page. I applied, I asked to join uh, the, the moderator of the group within a day or two, got back and let me join. And the same thing works with these groups uh, for sale in Fairbanks, buy, sell, or trade in Fairbanks. You request to join the group and then the moderator of the group will get back soon, hopefully, and, uh, and let you in. Uh, do that before you start creating your Facebook marketplace uh, listings, because this is one of the final steps in listing your, your item. So, so my item goes out to my friends, and then I also select for sale in Fairbanks or for sale, buy, buy and sell and trade in Fairbanks. And then, oh, and there's also a, a North Pole buy and sell and trade. I haven't joined that group, but maybe I should because uh, North Pole isn't that far away and people in North Pole drive into Fairbanks all the time. And I guess if I'm selling, uh, why not reach people in North Pole as well by joining the North Pole buy and sell group? All right, so I, uh, when I was finishing up my marketplace item, I said I was also also wanted to see it listed in, in two other groups. And finally, the big step is hit the publish button. Simple. It really is a pretty simple, straightforward. I'm showing you step-by-step. -step. Facebook Marketplace walks you through these steps just as I've shown them. Okay, so what do you do now? You put something out there and you put a price on it. People start to, um, <laughs> people start to <laughs> offer you half of what you're asking. Uh, they make low ball offers. Um, uh, they're dinking around with you and using, uh, and using up your precious, precious time. And anywhere, and anywhere that your advertisements say uh, your price was firm because if you didn't say your price was firm, then people are immediately going to assume that you're willing to negotiate a lower price. Uh, even if you say, yeah, my price is firm, says so right in the ad, still people are gonna uh, offer you less. Um, that's just what some people do. Uh, so if you're gonna get into any kind of negotiation, know what your bottom line is. Know that before you get into a negotiation, don't get caught up in the emotion of, uh, of negotiating a price. Know before you even start what your bottom line is. And I frequently ask a price that's 25% more than actually what I expect to sell it for. And you know, people, people appreciate it when you come down in price. And so that lets, lets, that lets me come down in price. That's what I do. And people who make low ball offers you know, in the message, I just, uh, I don't even respond. I ignore them. Um, you know, as soon as I put something out on Facebook Marketplace, within an hour, I might have 12 people saying they're interested in it. And, uh, and I read carefully and respond. Uh, do you have any questions? That's usually the first thing I say is, do you have any more questions about it? And, uh, and, and would you like to see it? And uh, that's 
pretty much how I respond uh, in these chats that get started. Um, so eventually uh, you're gonna meet the buyer, uh, meet the buyer in a well-lighted safe place. Uh, my wife, Susan, says that uh, she doesn't want me selling uh, on our property. And I respect that. So we don't, you know, I don't, I don't invite people to the house to, to look at the stuff I'm selling. Uh, it just doesn't feel safe. With the exception of a lawnmower and weed whacker, uh, everything else is sold in uh, elsewhere. So places that I've uh, met people to sell, I've met people in a Walnut, Walmart parking lot. I sold an iPhone there. Uh, Fred Meyer, I told you the story of selling the Connex uh, over there. Uh, Dateline Copy is near where I live over by UAF. And that is a well-lighted parking lot. You know, I prefer to show up, arrange something in the day or at least, you know, dusk hours. Um, but it's a, it's a public place. And I think that both the buyer and the seller are most comfortable beating in a public place like that. So Dateline Copy has been really good. People seem to know where Dateline Copy is. And, uh, and then I've also, uh, when I was selling stuff and I still had the rental cabins, I was selling a trailer and a snowblower. And, and, uh, and so various venues are selected. You have to decide, I suppose, where is the best venue for you uh, to sell your stuff. Uh, after you sell it, then uh, buyers will evaluate you and rank you as a seller. Uh, I didn't know this until I started putting together this talk and I was rooting around uh, the Facebook marketplace. I looked up my profile and it said I had a two and a half star rating. Well, you know, I think I deserve a five star rating when I sell stuff, but uh, there are various categories of, of ratings. Uh, what did I do well? Well, somebody said I communicated well. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, somebody said uh, I don't communicate well, and I don't know you know you don't know who, who did the uh, punctuality. That's interesting. I have agreed to meet people at these various places, and you know you set the time three o'clock, four o'clock, three fifteen. Sometimes I pick a time that's more specific than on the hour because some people I think when you say on the hour you know, that there's some, uh, some wishy-washy, some, some slop time built into that. Uh, I use, I like to say 315 or 320. Uh, it makes it a little more specific. And, you know, occasionally I get stood up and occasionally people will show up 10, 15 minutes late. If somebody is five minutes late, I text them back and I say, I'm here. And, uh, and they'll text me back usually and say, uh, I'm on my way, sorry I'm late. And I'll be there in five minutes or something like that. But uh, I mean, you know, nobody likes to be inconvenienced and I have other things to do with my time. If uh, somebody doesn't show after 10 minutes, uh, then I'm gone and they don't buy it and uh, somebody else will. Uh, I try to communicate that punctuality is important when uh, when I'm going to meet somebody. Uh, so here's another way to use Marketplace. Uh, a friend of mine just told me about this yesterday. He said he had a yard sale last summer, and the yard sale wasn't generating much traffic. Uh, so his two sons posted it on Facebook, and he said almost immediately people started showing up at his yard sale. So uh, if if Facebook Marketplace isn't where you're going to sell, at least think about Facebook Marketplace as a place to advertise that you're having a yard sale. And I also want to acknowledge that there's an impact to using uh, these so-called free services. Um, Facebook is uh, generating a lot of information about you every time you post on Facebook. Uh, the keywords that it finds in your posts, uh, the groups that you join, uh, you're being profiled constantly. And when you search on something outside of Facebook, magically Facebook finds out about it and, and starts showing you ads there. Uh, so you're giving, you're giving up quite a bit of privacy. Um, I used to work at the Fairbanks Daily News Miner. 
I am a fan of local journalism and, uh, and advertising powers local journalism. Uh, I actually feel a little guilty every time I sell something on Facebook Marketplace. But at this point, the kinds of things that I'm selling on Facebook doesn't make any sense for me to run a classified ad in the news miner. Uh, so at least I've maintained my subscription to the news miner. In fact, I'm, I make a mo monthly donation to the news miner. Something I'd like you to think about. Uh, this cartoon, of course, has made its rounds and I'm sure it's familiar to everybody here. And at this point, uh, I've been talking for about 40 minutes. I will open it up to questions and comments. And I guess, oh, and before I, uh, one more thing, one more page. I want you to know that I have a favorite club in town called uh, Tundra Talkers. And Tundra Talkers has helped me a great deal with my public speaking and leadership skills. And if you're looking for an organization in Fairbanks that meets, it meets in person, but we also have uh, Zoom meetings every other week. If you know somebody who could use a little help with their public speaking and confidence, this is a place to go. At tundertalkers.org is my home group in Toastmasters International. And with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And here we are. What questions do you have? I have a question. Go ahead, Carol. Um, you mentioned being a member of certain groups to post your listings on. When, is that even necessary? Because I, I sold when my mother's we had to sell my mother's house out of state. I was I went out to Massachusetts and I posted the items that I wanted to sell. But of course, my friends are not in Massachusetts. They're up here um, mm -hmm. mostly. And it, it appeared in the Massachusetts Facebook listings and I didn't have to join any group. So isn't there some sort of an automatic audience for your postings? Well, groups are listed as public or private, and perhaps you were uh, seeing your stuff on a public group, but all the groups that I've joined are private groups that require me to uh, ask to join. Now, Facebook, you were you in this other location at the time that you were posting? Facebook yes, I was in Massachusetts. Yeah, Facebook knows your location. You do know Facebook knows a lot about okay, you. So yeah yeah i'm aware of that yeah um so, so what would, if if you... a specific group i'm not sure how facebook would know to put anything into a, a public group uh, uh everything you post i think just simply goes into your your personal timeline well nothing, fortunately, nothing fortunately in massachusetts it didn't work that way people saw it and they came to buy the stuff and i you know i don't live there but people in that area did see it and, and okay. I, but I don't know if it's the same thing up here. I, and I don't know how that worked for you, but it worked. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question, Judy Tilbert. Go ahead. Hi, you had said that for communication, you, you stayed with the um, Facebook messenger, you know, as you were talking to the people. But then when you said you got close to the time to sell and they were late or something, then you texted them. So did they, so do you at some point change over to texting then and, and then they know your number and stuff? That is such a great question. Okay. So at the time, after I've agreed to a time and a place, mm -hmm. uh, I hate being stood up and people yeah. and the people can be late for, for perf perfectly good reasons and so you know after i've established a, kind of a dialogue and i know i'm meeting somebody mm -hmm. and they seem real mm -hmm. uh, i say let's let's meet at uh let's meet in the uh, fred meyer parking lot at uh, 215 uh here's my cell phone number if anything changes if anything happens uh what's yours that's what i say here's my cell phone number i type it in and then i say what's yours Mm -hmm. And so we have a way of communicating, um, well, that frankly, it's, it's outside of Messenger, yeah. I know, 
but I'm not sure everybody, I, that's what I do. I'm oh. comfortable with it. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. You know, I don't monitor Messenger. Uh, I, I guess I'm her. really, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want, you know, I usually, I usually exchange a phone number at that point if I'm meeting somebody. Mm -hmm. I have a problem with too many pieces of equipment that are too big. I, <laughs> I tried to give a cement mixer to the China Tool Library and they told me it was too big and heavy. They didn't want it. That no one would want to, to take it away for the weekend and use it. So I've got this 250 pound cement mixer <laughs> that I would love to get rid of, but I don't want anyone here at my home either. Yeah, uh, you and I talked about that. Uh, a month or two ago. Uh, it's interesting that you haven't sold it. Uh, would you be willing to make an exception, uh, have something outside in your driveway uh, and, and be willing to have somebody come over and look at it? Well, I could probably, yeah, roll it out of the, the shed next spring. Or, or, you know, thinking through the security questions, uh, would you would you invite a friend over to be with you when somebody comes over to look at the cement mixer? And cement mixer is a pretty specific thing. And I remember you showing me a picture of it. Oh, I would have wanted that. it if I was still, you know, if I was still building stuff, it looked great in good condition. And for, I think you had a $250 price on it. I, I did. And, I, and I was I willing then to give it away to the tool library. <laughs> Anything yeah, yeah, yeah. out of there. And then I've got tools that I don't even know what they are. I mean, I know a table saw when I see it <laughs> and a shaper when I see it. But right, right. And 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 your your ability to take them away to meet somebody with them is doesn't uh doesn't really work no. for you. Yeah. Do you have a, a friend who's young and strong who can help you with that? I could try to find someone <laughs> or maybe just a neighborhood yard, yard sale jacked up, you know, for prices better than regular yard sales. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you know, when you have a yard sale, your neighbor fr frequently will bring some old things over and say, hey, do you mind I, if I put this stuff <laughs> in your sale? <laughs> Keep that in mind. Betsy, the University also has a, a free cycle sale in the spring. If you wanted to just bring the stuff and put it on the tools table and, and it, it would get given away for free, you could do that. But, they, but these are huge tools. Oh. <laughs> you oh. know, like a, a table saw is big. Yeah, yeah. So I I uh, I do I do give stuff away at the free sale every year. Mm -hmm. And they have an area for large items where you drive up and uh and a couple of strong young people will help unload it. I think that's a great idea. If you don't care for the cash, um, somebody, will somebody will want that cement mixer and, and your table saw. I would go, I would go for the free sale. Hmm. If you can get a friend of, if you can get a friend to take it there for you. Sounds good. Ask an aging at home. They might have some volunteers who will help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> that's very true. <laughs> and, and I can see how I can see how a table saw and and that cement mixer just take up a lot of space. Yeah. Single car garage. No. Yeah. Still, they take and up space. extra shop. Yeah. And if you don't need them, keeps them out of the out of the transfer station. Oh, and I still I still occasionally drop off stuff at the transfer station. Seems like. Because it's convenient. Uh -huh. I do. Yeah. I've taken a lot of things there. I did sell a tractor for $1,000 a couple of years ago. That worked. I did it on Craigslist. Any other questions? One other issue that I ran into in Massachusetts was the the Facebook marketplace asked for 
some more data for me for tax purposes. Apparently, in Massachusetts, if you sell over a certain num amount of uh, products, they'll, they'll, they'll make you pay tax on it, like sales tax or something. I, I don't think we have that problem here. No, we do not have sale tax, sales tax in Fairbanks. Have you ever heard of that in other states? I, I don't have any experience in other states. Yeah. What's the difference between setting a price on marketplace or just sending everything to auction? Let them pick it up and sell it. How much, how much stuff are you talking? Are we talking about an estate sale? Well, um, for shop equipment that I'm never going to use. I mean, compressors and jacks and table saws and mm -hmm. um, choppers and shapers. And <laughs> uh, do you recall that Alyeska used to have an annual auction and it was a big equipment auction off of Van Horn? Uh, Alyeska now lets, lets the same space be used by an, uh, an auction site called First Strike. Uh, the, the number numeral one and an ST and then strike.com. And First Strike has a lot of really heavy equipment, dozers, excavators, front end loaders. And then Alyeska brings, I don't know, 50, 50 plus trucks every year uh, to this great big auction. And they accept individual items from well, from you, they'll accept individual items, but you know, the, this is mostly big stuff. I got rid, I got rid of, I got, I got rid of, yeah, I got rid of that great big green track machine uh, at a first strike auction this past summer, uh, you know, because it was a 5,000, it was an $8,000 item. Uh, I often see some small things like snow machines and four wheelers at that auction, but it's really an auction for big stuff but sometimes they palletize things, a bunch of tools they might put on a pallet and then sell by the pallet. You're not going to get much. And of mm -hmm. course, the auction site gets gets a commission of, I think, about 15% of whatever the sales price is. And if it doesn't sell, you've got to take it all back, take it back home. Uh. Mm -hmm. I, I go to that sale because it's it's I think it's fun looking at the big equipment walking around. <laughs> excavators that are you know two stories tall it's the gold miners show up at these uh equipment sales uh, when you go on facebook you have to already have signed up and be a member of facebook or whatever yeah. i'm not on facebook so i don't know yeah you you have to have an account on facebook okay. to use facebook yeah. And so with your Facebook account, you'll show up, you'll have a new account, and then you won't have any friends yet. Um, you start to look up the people that you know on Facebook and uh, send a friend request to them. And pretty soon you'll have a small group of people that you can enjoy communicating with on Facebook. Facebook will eventually suggest more friends, and they'll be friends of friends, who are frankly probably people you know who you would enjoy being in more regular contact with. That's how it's worked for me. Mm -hmm. And it's free, no charge. Just know that you're giving up quite a bit of personal information, implicitly <laughs> giving up it, personal information when you join Facebook. Mm -hmm. So what should I do about my, uh, my sister's watch gift? I mean, it, it's an old, it's an analog watch. You have to wind it up, and I don't even think it works. But um, but I'm holding on to it because my sister gave it to me. It, I have a lot of things like that. Yeah, it, <laughs> we it all really do. Goes, it really goes to that core question: Am I am I disrespecting my sister's memory in any way by getting rid of something that she gave me? Mm -hmm. and, and and that's really where where it is with some things. Am I disrespecting their memory by not keeping their stuff? I'm do working you, through that. Do you have nieces and nephews and children that you could say, hey, I have a watch that 
Susan, my cousin, sister Susan gave me. Is anyone, um, it, it, I'd love for it to stay in the family. Is anyone interested? I could, I could do that, but it, okay. It's also a crap watch, right? <laughs> it, it's just an old watch. The only value it has to me is, is sentimental. And, okay. I, and, and do I think any other family member would care? No, no, actually she's a, actually she's a stepsister and she's the only daughter of my uh, my father's second wife. So I don't think, you know, I don't think anybody wants it. And I just haven't been able to let go of it yet. I've heard that guys have a harder time getting rid of tools and uh, women, not to stereotype, but women have a harder time getting rid of jewelry. Does that, does that ring true for anybody? Because, because it, it's not just the jewelry, it carries memories. And the tools that I have, I know what I built with those tools. I, I have some rental cabins where my nephews came and my brother came to Alaska to help build these cabins. And so the cabins had, have memories, but I guess the tools carry memories for me as well. And, uh, and, and Mary is saying she takes photographs of things like that. I, I, yes, Mary, I, I've heard that recommendation before in a downsizing class. And I've done it. I've, done, I've taken pictures of a few things before I got rid of them. Is there a favorite charity that your sister would have liked you to donate to, like some homeless folks or whatever? Well, I'd have to ask her. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And then you'd have to tell her why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she's, she's alive then. I, I thought perhaps yeah. she had passed out. No, she's, no, she's living. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, harder. I have a oh, question. Here, wait, 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 here's something I've, I've done uh, in, in lieu of in lieu of buying something, somebody really didn't want cash or, or their negotiation was going in a certain way. Uh, I asked I asked the uh, the seller if he had a favorite charity. And I said, rather than paying you for cash, I said, can I give money to your charity? And uh, and that's worked a couple of times and, and he feels good about it. I feel good about it. And no cash was uh, exchanged between the buyer and the seller. Speaking of charities, I'm sorry, Marvin, I, I interrupted you. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, do you have any ex experience about uh, who, uh, if you wanted to give away heavy stuff, uh, who actually uh, would uh, take care of it? For example, I have a, a piano that uh, one of my uh, sons used to play. I don't. Uh, it's in the basement of my house. Uh, is there somewhere I can actually have people come out and haul it up, haul it away? They'd have to be pretty good about all that stuff. It's a heavy thing. Yeah. Well, uh, first a, sh a short story and then an answer to your question. Short story is the guy that bought that Connex, he bought it in, in April while there's still snow on the ground. And we agreed that he would have it moved by June 1st because I was selling the property. And he could not find somebody in town that would move it. Okay, because it had they had to have a forty foot trailer. They had to be legal on the highway, and uh, and and by the end of the summer, after the property was actually sold, we had to get an extension from the property buyer for the Connex to be there. Um, this the construction season in this town had just picked up. It was used, you know it's really hard to find labor and hard to find uh, a trailer. Now to to answer your question, uh, Marvin. Uh, you know, if I needed somebody to move stuff, uh, when, when I buy an appliance, when I was being a landlord and I was buying, you know, refrigerators and stuff, uh, the Home Depot contracts out their moving uh, uh, crews, you know, the people that come, come and pick up and drop off stuff. I, I, maybe I'd start there and ask uh, Home, De Home Depot who do you use for moving your appliances? And uh, because, you know, what does Home Depot cost me $35 or something like that, you know, to haul, 
to, to deliver and haul the old one away, that's not much money. Mm -hmm. And somebody's making money off of it. There's an, there's, so that's where I might start looking for, uh, you know, it's hard, hard to find a, a handy person in town to do small tasks. I guess I'm talking to AAH, you guys know that. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to find uh, people who will do what you're asking, Marvin, mm -hmm. to move a piano out. But I, yeah. What about moving yeah. companies? Yeah, I guess I would ask, I, you know, those would be places I'd ask, sure. Yeah, but, but uh, I'd, go, I'd want it to have a uh, happy uh, home when it leaves. I mean, somebody can use it. It's a good, it's a, it's a All right, quality so, uh, piano. Okay, so yeah, ha talk to a mover who get, you know, first sell it, right? Sell it where it is. And I'd, be, then, I'd be happy to give it away to a, a to, for a non cabinet, you know. <laughs> So I, I had a, you know, at one time, uh, there used to be um, uh, operations where um, they would take stuff um, uh, as, a, as, a, as a donation, and they would come and get it. Uh, and you, every once in a while, you'd see the truck uh, around town. And I'm wondering if it's still, uh, that kind of thing still works. Don't know. Okay. Don't, don't know if the, if the home, if the... Uh... So a donation to somebody like uh, the food bank, who knows if they would be willing to pick it up because they know they can sell it. Yeah. Don't know. No, that 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 uh, couch that I showed you uh, that I sold for fifty dollars. The uh, I think it was Princess. One of the hotels in town had donated had had refreshed all the furniture in all in all their hotel rooms and donated all that furniture to the food bank. And then the food bank was selling the furniture hmm. for cash, and okay. that's that's where that's where I got uh, a lot a lot of the furnishings for my rental cabins it was on that sale. So, oh, and somebody mentioned uh, the idea of donating uh, donating and getting a tax deduction for the donation. You know, the the uh, the automatic charitable. Uh, deduction is on a, is in a twelve thousand dollar range, and so unless you are giving making charitable donations that are over twelve thousand dollars, I think that's the current number. And then uh, then don't, don't bother itemizing, right? Because you automatically get twelve thousand without itemizing. Mm -hmm. Unless you're really giving away some high value items, then uh, then it's not worth it to itemize. I just took a Anali class. That's where I got that bit of information. Okay. Um, I'm uh, getting rid of uh, some of my uh, um, books. I have uh, maybe 2,000 of them. Uh, and um, I'm uh, giving, uh, into de uh, dealing with history and that sort of thing. Uh, and so I'm uh, donating them uh, to uh, Forget Me Not. Uh, and uh, uh, giving it to them and uh, have uh, a, a tax uh, uh, benefit, but uh, I, don't, I'm, I don't have to spend time trying to, to market it. Yeah. Did you go to Terrence Cole's book sale? Terrence Cole passed away. He had a book collection. Who's uh, that? Oh, yeah. Ter Cole. Terrence Cole. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. And and uh, and his his book collection was uh, sold uh, at the public library to benefit. And I don't remember who it benefited, but uh, it was a nice. Well, he, had, he had a he had a tremendous. Uh, um, uh, people really knew about him. I mean, I think the name would would draw people in. You know, yeah. and a lot of what I have are things like medieval uh, Europe and uh, Russian history and all that kind of stuff. I don't think there'd be as much of an interest. Of that sort of thing. Yeah, and the value, I suspect that the value that you place on those books is higher than the value that you'd ever get for them. Right. Trying to sell them. Yeah. I just I just want them to be used by somebody if, if that's possible. Yeah. And, and uh, I know that the, the for more the more expensive stuff, um, forget me not actually markets the stuff uh, internationally. Um, they have a way of, of uh, 
marketing that's that that kind of thing yeah and then there's the 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 other issue and i like to keep stuff out of the out of the landfill but there's a there's the issue of how much effort do i want to put into getting rid of something i mean you know my motives are good but uh but for a lot of small items i i don't have the time you yeah. know yeah so i just take it and put it on a recycle no, i'm not saying put your books on the transfer station recycle mm -hmm. that's that's when i just don't have the time to uh or or i think it just uh i, I can't think of any other quick way to to get rid of something yeah. i no longer okay. need yeah Here, here's a real world example um this is a uh, uh gps that's about 10 years old don't use it anymore because i've got a new Gar garmin gps they both do the same thing but garmin does it better uh, so obviously this is electronics. It's 10 years old. What's its value? Recycle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I get, well, it still works as a GPS. You know, anything that works, I don't know. I think it's worth 20 bucks and I'll get it. I'll get a few lattes out of that. So, uh, yeah, was this what you wanted to hear? I, I hope it was helpful. Uh, it was kind of fun putting together this presentation and thinking about how I've been doing this. Uh, I'm, I'm still struggling with, you know, how to get rid of some things like like Marvin, your piano. Mm -hmm. I've got a I've got electronic piano, which uh, I, I won't sell because I sit at it every other day and play on it. So, it, you know, it's not something I'm going to get rid of. But uh, I've got camera equipment that's old and it's not antique. It's just it's just old stuff, and uh, and 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 the effort that it would take to get it into the hands of somebody who might want it, you know, I don't know that I have the time or that I care. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? What do you do with it? Oh, I have some camera equipment from that precede that my dad picked up in Germany right after World War II, Leica cameras. And so again, there's an emotional attachment to those Leica cameras. I'll never use them. They're film cameras. Yeah, and I'm not those, sure they're those like those Leicas could be worth good money, though. I have a collection of of Leica stuff too. Uh, and I've uh, been a, in an organization that uh, uh, is concerned about the history of Leica and all of that. There's an international uh, um, uh, uh, group that uh, would be of, of interest. I mean, that there are people who um, really uh, uh, worship Leica. You know, you know, the older the better. As soon as I leave this uh, this Zoom, I'm going to search Facebook for a Leica uh, a, a Leica group. I'm yeah, sure there's is, several. Some of, some of them are international. Yeah. You have any other questions? Um, yeah. Can you leave your um, email address or, or how to contact you if we have questions? I'd be glad to. I'm putting it in the chat right now. Okay. Thank you. And there it is, ericmuling at gmail.com. M U E H L I N G. Well, who, who else has got a story where you're struggling uh, to get rid of something that you have some kind of emotional attachment to? And how do you think you're going to resolve it? Well, we all have that, don't we? We do. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, that's enough for me. And it was enjoyable meeting you all and discussing this. I, I hope it was, uh, I hope it helped. Good. Well, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Very really enjoyed welcome. the presentation. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Eric. Thank you so much. Very good. I'm, I'm inspired. <laughs>